Welcome everyone to uh, Wikimania 2023. Uh, I'm Butch Bustria, the lead core organizer. Uh, today we will be discussing about the regional grant committees. With us, our uh, panelist is uh, Gozi, uh, representing ESIAP. We have uh, Farah uh, from uh, the MENA region, uh, Shabab from the uh, South Asia region, Harriet from uh, uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa also uh, with us, uh, Nanor also from uh, the MENA region. So uh, we'll start first with uh, a, uh, our host today, uh, Gozi of uh, EZAP. Over to you, Gozi. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Gozi. I'm from Asia region. Uh, uh, the, the original submission for this session is actually from Farah from MENA region. So I will give Farah for the floor for opening. Thank you, Gozi. Greetings, Wikimania. I'm Farah Mustaklim from Palestine. I'm serving on the Regional Grants Committee for Africa and the Middle East. And I would like to say a quick word about the Regional Grants Committees that I've been a, a part of for the last two years. Uh, so the regionalization of the grant decision-making has been a great step towards the decentralization of the Wikimedia movement as a whole. Um, it has allowed for deliberations between the diverse group of people that are more familiar with the, uh, with the dynamics of their, own, uh, of their own local regions that can make more nuanced decisions and uh, on the funding of the different projects. Um, I invite you all to explore the different grant opportunities and to talk to your regional grants officers or a member of your regional grants committee. That's one of us or the many more um, uh, members. And uh, I, with that, I will give it back to Gozi. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, today we have, for the speaker, we have me, myself, Gozi, and we have Sabab from South Asia region and Harriet from MENA and Sub-Saharan African region, of course. This whole session, this whole presentation is supported by regional grant committee all around the world and uh, from committee resource team. Okay, first, what is regional grant committee? So it is committee who providing both guidance and support to applicant as well as making decision about how movement funds should be distributed. So. It is a volunteer role, but is actually supported a uh, supported community resource team to make a uh, to review the proposal from grantee and also making a decision. But it's collectively uh, review and collectively decision. Okay, next slide will be what is the regional grant committee function? So. The regional grant committee function will be responsible and ownership for setting priorities in the region, of course, allocating fund for specific type of initiative and assuring the involvement of allied partner organization, which is we have like four type of grant. One is a community fund, rapid fund, alien funds, and the last is a research fund. Each this process benefit greatly from existing expertise, new idea, and awareness of required skill for local communities. Next will be the purpose of the regional grant committee. The purpose is objective, objectively review and allocated grant for projects that align with Wikimedia mission with the goal of fostering community engagement supporting innovative project and promoting diversity and exclusivity. So the grand regional, uh, regional grand committee makes sure that the project from the proposal is actually aligned with the Wikimedia movement. Next will be presented by Shabab. Go over to you, Shabab. Hello, everyone. My name is Shabab, and I am one of the members of uh, the Regional Grants Committee for South Asia. So let's uh, go back a little bit. Yeah. 
So this is the RGC operation, how the Regional Governance Committee uh, works. So we live in a world with a diverse um, geographical diversity. There are cultural diversities. So right now, the Regional Committee are actually separated in eight regions. And for these eight regions, only seven committee works. One of the two of the regions are the same committee right now. So for the RGC operations, we have uh, the region we have are Central East Europe and Central Asia, North and Western Europe, North America, Latin America and Caribbean, East Southeast Asia and Pacific, South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East and North Africa. So Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East and North Africa, those two uh, regions have the same committee right now. So how to uh, select the committee member, how they come. So the RGC, so for the RGC selection process, so they, it, all the members come from the community. So there, there are uh, a form or a meta, someone can nominate themselves to serve for the uh, regional grants committee. And after the selection process, then, uh, they start working. There is another way that uh, if a committee at a point uh, thinks that they need some specialized uh, expertise from some other community member that they can benefit from, so they can invite a particular skilled, um, a particular community member who are skilled on a particular topic, let's say for technology or maybe finance or banking or uh, maybe someone has some experience or with the local regulations. So these are the two selection uh, process that um, actually happens. It's not an election, it's a selection process. Next slide, please. So how important is RGC? From the uh, beginning uh, of my uh, talk, I mentioned that we live in a very diverse world and each of the geographic region had its own challenges. So it is very difficult to um, understand the situation better uh, from an outside who is not uh, from, from an outsider who is not residing on on those particular geographic regions. So that's why when the regional grants committee was uh, the system of regional grants committee was established, it enabled us uh, to bring together people who has in-depth knowledge on uh, the challenges and the opportunity of that particular region. So it is an effective effort of uh, going towards more diversified um, approach and bring all the expertise from the community that we can have. When we have that process, sometimes people uh, think that RGC is just for grantees. Uh, it might seem like RGC is an obstacle uh, to the grant process because right now they want to, um, uh, there is an extra step of recommendation that uh, the RGC um, people actually make. So is it an obstacle? Absolutely not. So the main uh, purpose of Regional Grants Committee is not to deny grants, it's to facilitate the grant. So many times when a grant request comes, maybe grant is new, maybe they do not know a particular challenge about that region. So when the Regional Grants Committee members actually review the grant, the grant applications, they can actually uh, can recommend you a different approach, a better approach, or maybe recommend nothing to you and say you are doing a very good job. So we are the people who have um, two kind of skills that we have. Uh, we bring together uh, actually from outside, maybe from our profession or training or something like, or academic training or something like that. Or uh, when we are um, actually reviewing the pro uh, other applications from the same region and following up the grants reports and know uh, the challenges that cumulative knowledge actually sometimes be very beneficial to the grantees as well. So we can recommend them better. So I just is not an obstacle. Our actually agenda is to make the grant um, successful and the grantee a very great success. So 
Yeah, so YGC is not an obstacle. We are here to help other grantees. So I think I'm uh, sending it back to Gozi again. Thank you, Gozi. Okay, thank you, Sabab. Uh, the next section will be presented by Harriet from MENA and Sub-Saharan region. Um, thank you, Gozi. Thank you, Shabab. And hello, everyone. I am Harriet Bayo from Sub-Saharan Africa, and I'll be presenting on how proposals are reviewed. Um, slide, please. Yes. So I would like to start by sharing that proposals are reviewed by regional committee members from an objective and supportive stance. In addition to this, individuals with any form of conflict of interest with the proposal or the grantee have to recuse themselves from the review process. Um, next slide. So um, there are four criteria involved in the review process by regional committee members. And the first one is on the overall clarity of the proposal. That is how clear and coherent is the proposal cons um, considering the activities mentioned, the strategies, the entire plan um, listed in the proposal. The other thing to consider when it comes to the overall clarity is how feasible is the proposal considering the um, objective, the activities, and even the time frame listed in the proposal. The second criteria is on the impact potential and then the strategic alignment, um, considering the organization and then the vision and also the uh, proposals, objective and goals. And um, do they align? And um, is there any indication of community support or um, reflecting the needs of the community? And how is this proposal going to benefit the community in terms of bringing in new volunteers or even retaining the existing volunteers? And um, does the proposal indicate any form of strategic partners that will ensure that the proposal is implemented? Um, the third criteria is on the organizational capacity. Um, the third criteria is on the organizational capacity and the budget. Um, who are the team members involved here? And are they experienced volunteers or not? And is the grantee looking forward to outsourcing um, people who would help them in implementing the proposal? And does the budget match the impact? Is there any form of support for volunteers or um, a budget for the tools and equipment that will be needed to ensure that the proposal is implemented? And the last one is on the learning and evaluation. What does the grantee hope to learn from implementing this proposal? And are they gathering the right um, data or providing metrics for this particular um, proposal or learning? And are they using the right tools so these are the criteria we as regional committee members depend on to review a proposal. Um, um, I'll be taking you through how the review process is done. So the uh, review process is done first with an individual review where we go through the proposal and then um, provide um, feedback on maybe the strength of the proposal and even any other outstanding questions. This feedback is shared with the grantee on the discussion page of the proposal. And um, after this initial activity, we have a second deliberation, but this time around as a group. And then we come up with a unified feedback on the proposal. If there are any areas for consent or improvement or more strength on the proposal, we share this with the grantee. And at this stage, if the grantee feels that they need to meet with the regional committee members concerning some outstanding questions or to ensure that we are on the same page, um, page they can request that they meet with the regional committee members and then we can have a discussion with them. At this stage two, we do receive some form of resource from the com um, community resource team where um, the past reports of the grantee is shared with us and also the experience of the grantee is also shared with us. We also receive um, a document um, concerning the staff review of the proposal. And this in a way helps us to understand the grantee and also um, the past experience of the proposal. And after this um, stage, we have a final deliberation where the a decision will be made concerning the proposal, whether to fund it or not. And if there are any recommendations, we include this um, in this final deliberation. Again, any regional committee member with any form of conflict of interest is recused right from the start to the end. So at this stage, they wouldn't even be a part of the um, decision-making process as well. Um, um, next slide, please. So I would like to take this opportunity to share my experience as a regional committee member. Um, for me, it has been an, an, 
it has been an enlightening experience in the sense that I've gotten to know more about the grant review process. I've also learned more about proposal writing and also um, being supportive um, in my review. And this is through the trainees that we've had. So I would like to encourage um, everyone to take the initiative to be part if um, you identify with this. And also um, I would like to make some recommendations based on my experience that is for grantees to reach out to program officers and also to reach out to regional committee members if they need any form of help and also um, to take opportunity and make good use of the conversations that um, exist on knowing more about the proposal writing or even grant review process. And the last one is to um, assure um, grantees that um, we are here to support their work so they should um, have some form of good faith in the work of the regional grants committee. Um, thank you and over to you, Gozi. Okay, thank you, Harriet. Uh, the next session will be the question and suggestion from the audience. So offer to you, Butch. Uh, thank you, uh, Gozi. So uh, uh, I'm reading right now the uh, chat and uh, and also the, our etherpad. So uh, our first question here is, uh, how long are the term limits of the regional grant committees? Anyone could answer, please? Hey, I can answer that. So the term limit for each committee is officially two years. So uh, every two years, the committee members uh, should um, add more. Maybe someone is leaving. So that kind of um, thing actually happens. So right now, all of the, uh, as long as I know, all of the committees are running uh, on deficit. So. We always welcome more people to join with us and to work with us. So you are always uh, welcome. Over to you, Butch. Okay. Is there any other regional grant committees who would like to chime in as well? I can. I can add. Uh, I can add some. Uh, so, so yeah. As uh, as Shabat has said, the 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 original term limits are two. Uh, for two years, but then reappointment is, is possible for the for the uh, for the sitting committee members, and uh, uh, you know, and um, and adding new uh, adding new members uh, is always a good thing. But but also keeping some of the old members with with uh, with more experience is also a, a good idea for for the transition to have overlap. So it's not. Uh, the, the whole uh, committee is not overhauled every two years, so it's it's a it's a gradual uh, intro introduction of more members uh, rather than a um, you know a, a set of, of two years at a time. Okay, thank you. So uh, another question here on the Etherpad is, uh, what is the uh, eligibility of the regional grant committee uh, uh, member uh, anyone uh, I can add uh, um, answer for uh, this uh, briefly that uh, there is changes that happened to uh, months ago uh, about uh, who can be uh, as a member, uh, a volunteer member in the regional uh, funds uh, committee. And uh, many, uh, at least in my region, left uh, uh, the committee because uh, uh, they uh, uh, don't match uh, longer with the new criteria and the eligibility. And we can uh, find uh, this in uh, our uh, meta page. Uh, for example, uh, 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 staff or any uh, paid uh, member from affiliates cannot be anymore in the uh, regional fund committee. Uh, I don't remember where the, the uh, other uh, points, but uh, uh, the 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 new eligibility criteria is uh, on Meta. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> is there any guidance for beginners uh, to fill out the application or flux uh, in the in that particular case? Is it part of uh, the regional grant committee's work? 
uh, anyone from the regional grant committees, please? No, the uh, it is not uh, the part of RGC's work. So the flask is um, actually maintained by the grants committee, uh, actually the grants team of the foundation. And when a grantee actually submit a grant on flask, it automatically imports in the meta and the uh, uh, the program officer uh, who is in charge of the regional uh, grant committee notifies the committee that there is a, a grant application uh, which is pending for the review. So we do not um, actually uh, work with Flask uh, directly. And with the guidance for beginners, I uh, guess the community resource team actually arrange meetings with uh, possible grantees and um, help them. I do not know any particular tutorial that is publicly available or not. Maybe someone else can help with that. Yes, no, no. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Shabab, and uh, uh, I will introduce myself this time. Uh, I'm Nanor from a uh, uh, member uh, uh, regional uh, fund uh, committee for uh, Middle East and uh, Africa. Uh, actually, uh, it's not only for beginner. It, it could be any experienced user, but never applied for, for a grant. So uh, using the flux for the first time, it's a beginner for everyone, experienced users or uh, beginner users. And and uh, the flux, it's a, a, a it itself, it's a um, uh, um, for grant uh, a portal that uh, uh, many can use it and can find many uh, tutorials beside the meta and on meta and when anyone uh, registered on uh, this uh, portal, there is a tutorial there too explaining how to continue on that. And uh, besides that, we are here or any other uh, uh, staff member from uh, the um, uh, resource committee can help uh, with it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nanor, for that uh, insight or answer. Uh, we also have one question uh, from our audience. Uh, the uh, conflict of interest or COI of the regional grant committees uh, how, how has it applied when they're applying for a grant? Let's say a, a, an RGC member is a member of a, a user group or a chapter, and then they are actually an applicant for a grant. A, can and a committee member uh, would uh, need to recurse themselves or what is the process? Maybe I could answer that. Um, um, so um, right from the start, um... A grantee who is also a regional committee member would have to recuse themselves. Um, we know that um, the person will be listed on the proposal, and so the person would have to recuse themselves from the start and will not have anything to do with the review process. And as we shared earlier on, if you are receiving any form of um, um, compensation or um, payment as a result of being a member of the affiliate or um, any paid role, you can't even be a member of the regional grants committee. So these are ways to actually um, ensure that um, regional committee members um, do not have anything to do with um, the proposal or um, uh, are not in a way influenced by their rules or um, affiliation with the proposal. Yeah. Um, thanks. Okay, so uh, we have uh, one audience who uh, provided uh, it, their experience with the grant application. Uh, he mentioned that uh, his uh, rejection, uh, he, his uh, application got rejected. Uh, however, uh, there was a, a process that was done wherein uh, the grant application was uh, reapplied, but uh, with further guidance. And he is actually satisfied uh, on the assistance that was provided uh, and that that grant application was eventually approved so uh, that is one of one of the innovations that uh, we're trying to uh, replicate in uh, in various uh, locations in the, the grant committees uh, the other grant committees in in the world okay so uh, we also have uh, another suggestion uh, from our audience that uh, if possible the uh, 
regional grant committees would arrange a virtual meetings uh, that would provide both uh, the regional grant committees and grantees with greater clarity. Uh, I remember that was uh, that was done in one region uh, wherein uh, they have uh, a one-on-one -on -one with uh, with the grant applicant, and that was uh, one of the best practice that was uh, done in the other regions. Okay, so uh, any further uh, inputs uh, from our regional grant committees uh, uh, like FARA or NANOR? Uh, on the best practices done by other regional grant committees that you could uh, include in this uh, discussion. No, I think uh, we uh, don't have uh, uh, anything more right now to add to this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, one uh, other thing is uh, if we could uh, able to survey the members, uh, uh, the uh, members uh, and have have it uh, on public uh, that was uh, also a suggestion and uh, and then if in case you have uh, further uh, queries you can always go to meta there's a uh, you can just type in grants regions and then you could click on your uh, respective region and then uh, see the uh, contact information of uh, the regional grant committees and then also you could also uh, check the previous applications done by other affiliates or allied organizations on how they, they uh, perform their, their grant application that you could use that as a somewhat of a template uh, when you're applying for a new grant, okay? So uh, with that, uh, we appreciate the uh, attendance of our regional grant committees today. And uh, we now proceed with the uh, other sessions in Wikimania. Thank you.